guys, it's Nicole, and today I have sketch number 11 from the 6x6 paper pad series that I have been working through. It is also the 20th of the month, so this video is part of the For the Love of Crafting and Sharing YouTube hop. So links to all the channels participating this month will be down below in the description box. And for the month of August, I went with a twist on the back to school theme. I think most of us that have kids kind of, they start going back to school August, September. However, things are a little bit different this year. But when I originally set up all of the themes winter of 2019, I'm kind of glad I went this route because who knew that this was where we were going to be. I basically decided not to do a regular back to school theme of, you know, make a layout of your kids going back to school or any any kid school themed things. I went with the route of scrapbook classes and I'm sure many of you have purchased or participated in different online classes, so this was just a way to kind of continue the sharing the love theme and kind of give give you guys some maybe some classes that you've never heard of or things like that uh, me personally I kind of dropped the ball on that I really just could not kind of get my head out of the six by six class that I was already working on I didn't want to really pause that and jump back into a class um I've started many classes, finished very few, so I definitely had a lot to pull from. But my favorites are these 6x6 ones that Allison Davis has done in the past. I know for sure 6x6 Volume 1 and Volume 2, the PDF is formatted a lot like a class. Um, there's a lot of reading in the PDF that she gives you. Um, kind of talking about how to cut down the pads and why and mixing patterns and things like that. The one that I have been working on that is this 20 sketch bundle wasn't initially set up as a class. She chose to kind of run it as a group through Facebook for anybody that had purchased the sketches prior to, I want to say the end of May. And she's kind of been running it as a class where she's got some extra materials and she's doing videos and she's talking a lot about different things. So that was kind of where I just decided to stay. And uh, again, I'll post a link below for where you can find these sketches. She has already mentioned in the group that she's had a lot of people that couldn't get in prior to the cutoff date. So she... I'm pretty sure I saw her mention that she's going to run a second group when the current group is over. So if you bought the bundle or you missed out on getting into the Facebook group, I would say give it another um, probably eight or nine weeks, I think. I think they're on sketch 12 this week. I'm posting my 11 this week. And I barely just started 12. So I'm running maybe like a week behind her. But there's there's room for getting further behind. Especially with uh, school getting ready to start. And my kind of computer time is going to be cut down. Because one of my kids is basically going to be sharing space with me up here. So I basically followed the sketch the way that she had it. And I don't think I did really any modifications. My photos were all the same sizes as hers. Um, I did end up having to trim down my whole layout from top to bottom just because my papers kind of got chewed up coming out of the pad. So they ended up not really being six by six by the end. Um, I did go ahead and just stitched around the edge of all of the six by six papers. And then I took some gold splatter and just kind of splattered the white area that is on the far left and the far right just to kind of give it a little bit more interest. And then I showed these cloud dies in a recent haul and so I made sure to leave them out on my desk as kind of a reminder to try to find a way to use them instead of just putting them away and kind of forgetting about them. So I already kind of know that when I'm working with Doodlebug, Doodlebug is very loud and very busy, which that's not anything bad. 
I just kind of know in my process that I'm going to either want some tone on tone papers to mix in or white or vellum elements. So I cut some clouds out of vellum and then I decided to go ahead and stitch around the edges of those two to help them kind of show up a little bit better against those busy papers. And then the die cut pack was another thing that I had shown in that same haul. I already had the 6x6 pad, but I didn't have any of the matching embellishments. And this is for the Fairy Tales line from Doodlebug. So this is typically what I do, is I just dump out all the die cuts. The ones that I think will work with my layout, I go ahead and put on the top of my mat. Everything else I just kind of sort through, mostly just because this is the first time I'm using it. I really want to see, you know, what's in there. And even though I've pulled out all of those, I'm for sure not going to use them. I just kind of pull the ones that go with the tone of my layout. And then I actually kind of forgot about those balloons. I kind of had an intention to use them and then ended up just kind of doing some, some super basic clusters. And I only did two. She had two depicted on her sample or her sketch and I'm totally okay with that. Um, normally when I do this and I kind of set things up, I try to take a picture of the clusters so that when I start adhering things, I make sure that I have the room for it. And I did not do that over here on the left. So when I kind of start putting those down, you guys will see here in a minute that I kind of ran out of room. So I kind of wish I had remembered my method of just taking a quick picture of the clusters when I do get them figured out. Um, originally, I thought I was going to go with some more like heavy clusters and then I didn't even notice until I went to edit the video that she had some cute little like banners kind of poking out and I ended up skipping those. I think, and I've said this before, a lot of times by by this point in a layout, I just kind of start doing my own thing and figuring out where I personally like things and I go from there. And then because these are vellum, you're going to see any adhesive that I use. So I just put liquid adhesive kind of on the actual stitching lines and used some acrylic blocks to hold them down while the glue dried. And then I also showed these in a recent haul. These are the foam strips that are scrapbook.com branded and I bought them to try for journaling strips and I've kind of been using them for everything. <laughs> They're really easy for things like this where you're putting it behind um, letters, whether you die cut them or they're like a pre-made die cut like this. They're just already skinny and you just need to trim them to the height. So, so far that has been like a good test purchase. And I just saw a couple other things on their site that I want to order and kind of test out. I am already kind of a fan of generic products. So when store brands kind of come out with their own thing, I like to try them. So here was when I had originally put everything down that happy was actually higher up on the photo. And by the time I was trying to get the birthday die cut to fit, I quickly realized that everything was too low and very securely adhered. Like I ripped the Y on the, on the word happy, but was able to kind of get it back on there. So I'm just kind of going to go with it and tuck it under there as best I can. And just, you know, it is what it is kind of a thing. And again, like I said, I kept my clusters really simple. I just, you know, I have the title, I have the vellum clouds, I have these cute little clouds with the faces that were part of the die cut pack. And then I just picked a, like a large heart and a medium heart that was also from the die cut pack. And then just to add like a smaller size element to the clusters. I pulled out these mini jewels from Doodlebug. I've had these forever. Like I, they're so old. I don't even, well, this says 2011. So there you go. They are still available online. So that tells me that these are probably a tried and true supply. And the ones that I used are the cupcake assortment, but I'll post a link down below for like where you can see all of them. Most of the ones that I bought are where you get like two, 
tones of the same color in a pack and then I bought one that was like a Halloween mix and I have been pulling these out a lot. I think that it's just kind of when you get bored of enamel dots, you kind of move on to something else for a little bit. And for me, it's been these jewels, especially on these like bright, cheerful type of layouts. I really like the sort of sparkliness, if that's a word, of these little jewels. So... I thought I, a lot of times with clusters I do try to just start with the largest pieces and then just kind of start scaling down and I do like putting tiny things whether it's little wood veneer or sequins or enamel dots or something like that and then while I was waiting for my journaling to print out I did go ahead and put the date on here and I didn't actually have to look this one up because this was my daughter's first birthday and Although I think I might have put the wrong year. Yep, I did. I put the wrong year. So I'm going to have to go back and fix that. I didn't change the year on my uh, date stamp. But this was pretty much like her birthday is January 4th. And because it is so close to Christmas, we kind of give our family a break. And we usually wait and do her party in like the middle of January on a weekend. So when her birthday actually fell on the 4th, we just kind of had dinner at home and I had gotten her some cupcakes and so that was sort of her little personal celebration. So here you can see some close-up detail shots of the layout and again make sure to click the show more down below to see the links to all the other channels and any questions that you may have regarding this layout. So I will catch you guys later. Bye!